In university, you take a bunch of classes in statics, dynamics, design, manufacturing, and materials. And you think you've learned everything you need to know as a mechanical engineer. You aced your senior capstone design project, working nice. in a team to model parts and assemblies in CAD, run finite element analysis simulations, draft drawings, and deliver a functioning prototype. And you start feeling confident about your skills. It's basic human nature. While school does teach us the important core fundamental engineering knowledge, it doesn't automatically make us great mechanical engineers or guarantee future success in industry. There's naturally a huge gap that exists between school and industry, and that's nobody's fault. It's just the way it is. From what I've seen, every mechanical engineer, no matter how experienced, makes mistakes that are never learned about in school simply because they're rooted in lessons that only real world experience can teach. These mistakes cause a lot of confusion and frustration, massive project delays, and budget overruns. The frustrating part is the majority of these mistakes have nothing to do with your technical knowledge, though a few are directly related. So in this video, I'll walk through the most critical mistakes that mechanical engineers commit related to design, manufacturing, supply chain, communication, organization, and the overall scope of their job and how you can avoid them. The first category of mistakes is related to design and manufacturing oversights. These mistakes directly impact whether your designs can be built assembled and delivered successfully. Mistake number one is neglecting manufacturing and assembly before design. This is especially true early on during prototyping. Many engineers jump straight into CAD modeling, focusing on only how the part looks or functions in isolation. For every part you design, ask yourself what manufacturing process are you going to use to fabricate it? Perhaps it's 3D printing or CNC machining for the proof of concept and then log foam casting for the final mass produced product. Once you know the process, you can design according to the best DFMA guidelines for that process. A simple example is designing a part with sharp internal corners that are impossible to machine with standard end mills or creating complex contours that require multi-axis CNC setups and additional fixtures when a simpler design would work. I once reviewed a plastic enclosure design that had ribs terminating into a thin wall with no fill. This ultimately created knit lines and weak spots during injection molding, causing the part to crack under assembly torque. Nope. The design was technically functional in CAD, but completely ignored the packing and flow behavior of molten plastic. Always review manufacturing process constraints before modeling, what tools will be used, machine or mold limitations, minimum draft angles, and assembly access. Good design considers the entire manufacturing and assembly process from the start to avoid costly late stage rework. Mistake number two is ignoring tooling needs for testing and assembly. Fixtures, jigs, and test setups are critical but often overlooked during design. Based on my experience, in many cases when sending parts to a test house or lab for load, vibration, or environmental certification testing, you're required to provide a custom test fixture along with the product to ensure proper mounting and accurate results. Other situations that might require fixtures or jigs is during QA. When designing a shaft assembly requiring precise concentricity measurements during QA, the engineer failed to design reference flats or fixture mounting holes, and when the part arrived, QA couldn't align it accurately without building an ad hoc fixture, which delayed validation by two weeks and added unplanned costs. In another case, an engineer designed a press fit bearing without considering the arbor press tooling needed for installation. Operators then resorted to hammering the bearings in place, damaging the housing and bearing. Always include fixture mounting features, alignment flats, and assembly tooling to ensure seamless downstream integration. By the way, these are all real stories. Now mistake number three is overcomplicating designs with zero value. Simplicity is often overlooked by mechanical engineers eager to show their design skills. An example is adding unnecessary ribs, undercuts, or intricate cutouts that increase cycle time and cost 
without adding functional value. And one aluminum plate design that I reviewed, dozens of tiny triangular cutouts were used for weight reduction. While they did look good, they require separate tool paths and very small cutters. This greatly increased machining time. Switching to simple rectangular slots with standard radii cut machining time in half with minimal impact on weight or aesthetics. Use the simplest geometry that meets requirements and leverage standard features wherever possible. Mistake number four is applying unnecessarily tight tolerances and omitting critical GDNT requirements. Over tolerancing increases manufacturing costs exponentially. For example, dimensioning a boss diameter to plus minus one hundredth of a millimeter when plus minus one tenth of a millimeter suffices requires precision grinding or EDM, which increases part costs by tenfold. Always assign tolerances based on functional requirements, supplier capabilities, data, and cost performance trade-offs. Mistake number five is missing critical dimensions or using ambiguous notes or drawings. Notes like finished as required without specifying surface finish or process requirements lead to inconsistent interpretations. For example, a supplier once shipped plastic housings with a glossy finish instead of the intended matte textured surface because the drawing note simply said finish as needed. The glossy parts showed fingerprints and scratches easily and made them look cheap and unsuitable for the consumer product. The entire lot was rejected and production was delayed while new molds were retextured to achieve the specified matte finish. So always specify things like surface finish and other requirements with RA values, critical dimensions, and inspection methods explicitly. For plastic parts, always note texture codes for mold surface treatment such as SPI B1 or MT11010. Mistake number six is trusting simulation or test results without sanity checking or sufficient data. Simulation outputs are only as good as their assumptions, mesh, and boundary conditions. For example, say we ran CFD simulations on a spray nozzle with a coarse mesh and oversimplified inlet flow. However, in testing, the nozzle produced a narrow, uneven jet. We then refined the mesh and modeled inlet turbulence, which revealed flow separation at the exit and explained the poor spray pattern guiding the redesign. Another example is an engineer tested one adhesive bonded aluminum sample and used its shear strength value in his or her design. In production, several bonded joints then failed because adhesive performance varied depending on surface preparation quality, cure temperature, and bond line thickness. Testing multiple samples with different surface prep conditions and thicknesses would have revealed the variability and ensured optimal joint design. Now the next category of mistakes is about organizational and documentation failures. Mistake number seven is improperly documenting and tracking design revisions and changes. Without disciplined revision control, outdated parts can end up being manufactured. I've seen cases where engineers emailed the updated drawing to the supplier but forgot to update the revision letter. Weeks later, the supplier produced the old version still stored in the PLM system, resulting in very costly delays and scrap. Always follow your company's procedure for updating revision levels and document every change through engineering change orders or revision tracking logs. Procedures vary by company, so be sure to fully understand your organization's standard operating procedure for managing design revisions and part numbers. Mistake number eight is not knowing project deliverables, milestones, and deadlines. Engineers unaware of program gates and launch schedules prioritize tasks based on personal preferences rather than project needs. For example, an engineer who is oblivious to project deadlines and deliverables might spend two weeks refining cosmetic covers while the functional PC CB assembly mounting features remain incomplete, jeopardizing the engineering validation test build deadlines. Always align your daily work with critical path items and program milestones to ensure timely project execution. Talk to the project or program manager if you're unsure about any aspect of the project. Mistake number nine is skipping design and FMEA reviews with relevant teams. Reviews with other teams and departments catch design flaws, operational, and manufacturing risks and integration issues early on when they're easiest and cheapest to rectify and address. I've literally seen teams skip FMEA reviews to save time only to discover that a single point failure mode during production ramp result in a 
million dollar recall and a disastrous product launch. So incorporate cross-functional reviews systematically in your design process to identify potential failure modes and mitigate risks proactively. The next category of mistakes is often overlooked and relates to supplier and supply chain misalignment. Mistake number 10 is not understanding supplier capabilities, limitations, and roadblocks. This includes but is not limited to achievable tolerances, material availability, process capability, lead times, and even language barriers. For example, specifying a specialty material grade unavailable in the supplier's region delays tooling kickoff and part approval. In one project, the engineer specified a proprietary DuPont glass filled nylon that was unavailable locally. The supplier substituted with an unapproved material which caused compliance issues and incurred retesting costs. The moral of the story is always confirm supplier capability and availability before finalizing materials, tolerances, and surface treatments to avoid unnecessary risk. Mistake number 11 is not understanding the supply chain or assembly process. Engineers need to know where parts are sourced, how they are shipped, and the assembly sequence. This helps us predict, plan, and know who to talk to and coordinate with. Say we're designing sub-assemblies for final build in the United States, unaware that final integration occurs in China or India. This might require us to redesign to comply with local manufacturing regulation and tooling capability, delaying launch by several weeks. Understanding the full supply chain ensures designs are feasible within operational, logistical, and compliance constraints. Now, before before we continue, one of my favorite platforms that was instrumental in helping me become a way more well-rounded mechanical engineer was Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant's lessons build problem solving skills by allowing you to play with concepts. This method is proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Brilliant's lessons are crafted by professors, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, and Google, so you learn from the best. Brilliant fosters critical thinking through active learning, not memorization, so you become a better thinker. It also helps develop the habit of daily learning essential for both personal and professional growth. You can level up at home or on the go with Brilliant's interactive bite-sized lessons. One of my favorites is Brilliant's data courses that teach you to see trends, parse, and visualize massive data sets and make better informed decisions using real world data from Airbnb, Spotify, Starbucks, and more. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash engineering gone wild or scan a QR code on the screen or you can check out the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now the final category is professional and interpersonal mistakes. Mistake number 12 is treating everyone the same way. Different stakeholders, colleagues, customers, and suppliers have unique personalities, priorities, and communication styles. Manufacturer engineers focus on process and assembly feasibility and cycle time. Program managers prioritize schedules and risk mitigation, while quality engineers concentrate on compliance and tolerances. For example, explaining design trade-offs using technical equations to a project manager will be far less effective and persuasive compared compared to discussing schedule impacts and cost implications. Successful engineers know how to tailor their communication to their audience, fostering alignment and driving project success. Some coworkers may have a short temper, others may value rapport and trust. So invest time in understanding each individual's preferences to build strong working relationships. Mistake number 13 is not documenting conversations and decisions. Verbal agreements and requests are easily forgotten gotten or misinterpreted. For example, a supplier might agree to a material specification change, but later deliver parts that use the old spec, leading to catastrophic product test failures. Without written confirmation, you have no evidence to defend yourself and the blame and responsibility usually shifts back to engineering. Always document requests, approvals, and decisions in writing, whether through formal emails or meeting minutes. This ensures clarity, accountability, and traceability when issues arise and team members change. The last mistake is avoiding asking for help. Struggling alone often wastes time and increases 
increases the chance of mistakes. Seeking input from colleagues brings new ideas, confirms your assumptions, and helps you find better solutions faster. Remember, asking for help at the right times is not a sign of weakness. Rather, it shows that you're committed to doing the job right and learning from others' experiences. Now, I'll close by saying that I hope this video is able to help you avoid all of these critical mistakes and level up as a mechanical engineer. These are mistakes that I've seriously seen every mechanical engineer make regardless of their experience level. Avoiding them will help you deliver designs that are within spec and work the first time and projects that launch on time and within budget. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my video here where I walk through some very important design mistakes that even seasoned mechanical engineers make. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.